I get this question a lot and it is, Josh, why is it that I feel like I'm not progressing in Blender? I'm working hard every single day and I still feel like I'm at the same exact spot as before. Now, spoiler alert, it is not the reason that you might be thinking. In fact, it's closer to the opposite. If you're like most, you probably think you're not progressing due to one of these three reasons. Number one is you think you're not good enough or you're not naturally talented at Blender. Number two, you think learning blender is too difficult and that's why you aren't seeing improvements and number three is you think there's too much competition around and your work just looks like everyone else's so you feel lost now before i can explain why none of these are actually the case i just want to mention that if you feel like you're not improving it's not completely your fault because you see what i'm about to introduce in today's video will completely change the way that you actually think about your progress and before we get into that as always if you're new to blender hop into our free hard surface modeling jumpstart program will teach you all the basics of hard surface modeling from the blender ui and tools all the way to modeling in the final render and i'll link that program in the description if you'd like to enroll again it is free all right so back to your stagnant feeling in blender you feel stuck and like you've been in the same position for months or even years now let me explain why using an analogy that i think will make more sense let's say you own a coffee shop and every single day you get several hundred customers walking through the door so you have plenty of traffic coming in and let's say that most of the people that walk inside turn right around and leave without buying anything let me ask you this do you think it would make sense to try to get more people entering the store or do you think it would probably make more sense to fix the reason why most people are leaving in the first place. The lowest hanging fruit here isn't the amount of people entering your store, it's actually the reason why they're all leaving. That is the lowest hanging fruit. If they're all leaving without buying anything, that's the main problem. Now, this could be for a ton of reasons. Maybe your coffee shop smells funny. Maybe the environment feels weird. Maybe people don't feel welcomed. Maybe some Redditor is sitting there and scaring all the customers away. Whatever it is, you need to identify and fix it. It would be stupid to try to get more people into the store if everyone just ends up leaving. You need to fix the real problem which is the fact that people are immediately leaving your store. Yet so many people struggling in the blender space are effectively doing the same thing as the coffee shop and trying to get more people in the door. Whatever you're working on every single day may very well be the wrong thing. If you're already super good at creating designs, then maybe, just maybe, you should stop pumping out new designs for a minute and instead figure out the reason nobody appreciates them. Are you uploading to a portfolio? Are you sharing your work on social media? Is your lighting and composition good and visually appealing to look at? Are you uploading your work to a dead platform that nobody uses? You see, you may very well be a good designer, but if you still feel stuck and like you aren't improving, maybe your issue actually lies within a different metric. Think about it for a second. Maybe your goal is to get the studio job. Well, are you focused on the lowest hanging fruit? What is the easiest thing you could fix in your daily activities to get yourself one step closer to that goal? And it might not be the thing that you're doing right now. Again, think about it. The answer might be right in front of you. And if it isn't, spend a few hours diving deep and figuring out which thing you could focus on the most to really get the biggest results. Now, I remember when I was first getting started creating videos here on YouTube and growing the channel, making better blender designs probably wasn't going to make my channel grow any faster instead i probably needed to focus more on what the viewers really wanted and perhaps that wasn't creating super complex designs turns out more people wanted basic beginner friendly tutorials to get started along with tutorials for hard ops and box cutter you see what i mean i was focused on the wrong metric i could have became the world's best designer but that wouldn't have moved the needle if my goal was to grow the youtube channel so i hope this is all starting to make sense because this could legitimately completely change the direction of your 3D career if you really listen to what I'm saying here. You can even get super analytical with it and track everything. So get an Excel sheet, track it. Maybe your goal is to grow your art station portfolio. You can make certain changes to your work, wait a week or two, and see how that affects the follower count coming in. If it doesn't budge, something different probably needs fixed. And I'm serious, you can literally track this stuff. I mean, we do it in our own business as well. 
it's very, very useful. It's not luck, it's all in the data. And the data will reveal where your obstacles are and what needs fixed. So if you feel stuck in Blender and feel like you aren't getting any closer to your goals, consider everything I said in this video. Watch it again, absorb the info. It'll completely change the way you think about 3D modeling and Blender in general. I'll catch you in the next video.